So blood goes from the afferent arteriole into the glomerulus and some of it gets filtered out and becomes the filtrate as it moves into Bowman's space. So in this lesson, we're going to talk about kind of what happens as filtrate starts to form and the first section of the nephron that's called the proximal convoluted tubule. So what determines how much gets filtered from the glomerular capillaries or what actually ends up staying in the capillaries themselves and then goes out through the efferent arteriole is determined by a balance of forces. Just like in every other capillary in your body, there are four forces that are opposing one another that will determine how much actually goes into the interstitium. In this case, it's into the Bowman space versus how much actually stays in circulation. So this is what we see here in this drawing. So recall that there's always some hydrostatic pressure from blood. There's always some oncotic or colloid osmotic pressure from blood that's actually drawing fluid back while the hydrostatic pressure pressure is putting pushing it out pushing out uh, some of the fluid and electrolytes etc while the oncotic pressure draws it back and then there's some capsular uh, hydrostatic pressure as well here that's being exerted by the Bowman's capsule or whatever is already in the Bowman's capsule so the net pressure is typically uh, such that there is still filtrate that is pushed out. So overall, when we balance all those forces, there is a net filtration of fluid from the capillaries and the glomeruli into Bowman's space. Now, these values of these different forces can change based on essentially, you know, blood volume. They can change based on how constricted the afferent or the efferent arterial actually are. And so that can change the filtration rate, which is essentially how much fluid per minute gets actually filtered from the capillaries into Bowman space. But that's a topic for a different lesson. I just wanted to kind of bring your attention to the things that can actually affect this, um, this process. One thing that you should definitely know for the purposes of the MCAT is that cells and large proteins, large proteins here when I talk about that, mainly albumin, are not able to pass from the capillaries into Bowman space, and so they stay within the capillary. So you should not ever see any cells in urine. You should not see a lot of protein in urine. That's usually an indication that there's something wrong with the kidneys. Usually those are way too big to pass through Bowman's capsule, to pass into Bowman's capsule, and so they will stay in the capillaries. So therefore, the filtrate is mainly composed of water, glu glucose, ions, some amino acids, etc. cetera, uh, things like urea as well. And so um, after it passes from the capillaries into Bowman space, we call that filtrate. The filtrate then, then exits Bowman space and then passes into the proximal convoluted tubule where most reabsorption and secretion takes place. So we want to reabsorb everything that's still useful. And so things that are still useful for our body typically are ions such as sodium, calcium, chloride, magnesium, bicarb, as well as water. Water typically is reabsorbed because it follows the sodium or the sodium go. So it's a passive process. We often call that isoosmotic reabsorption because the water just follows the sodium. And glucose is typically completely reabsorbed at the PCT as well as amino acids and small proteins. So these components are reabsorbed through microvilli on the luminal surface of the cells of the PCT. So let's take a look at that. This is what we see here. So this is a cell of the proximal convoluted tubule. Notice how it has these microvilli, again, to increase surface area. That's always why microvilli are present. And there are a bunch of transporters that are really lined up here on the luminal surface. And so this is the lumen where the filtrate is going through and we call therefore this side of the cell the luminal surface. Notice how all these things are being reabsorbed here and then they're passed onto the blood uh, through the other side of the cell, the apical side of the cell. And our sodium potassium ATPase is ever present to make sure that things are balanced and the right concentration of ions are present um, inside of cells. So there's a long list of things that are reabsorbed at the PCT. As I said, most reabsorption of things from the filtrate back into blood occur at the level of the PCT, and several things are also secreted, which we'll cover next. 
So just by looking at that image, you may notice right away that some things are both secreted and reabsorbed at the PCT. Don't worry about that for the purposes of the MCAT. Just have a general understanding that most reabsorption and secretion occurs at the PCT and that molecules and ions are reabsorbed through the cells of the PCT or they actually can squeeze between them. Calcium ions and some other ions can sometimes actually squeeze between cells instead of actually passing through them. Um, so know that both of those mechanisms are at play. And then also remember that nephrons are highly vascularized so that these ions are absorbed and then they pass directly into blood to be returned to our circulation. So it's kind of like too much gets filtered into the filtrate. We don't want to get rid of all those things. So our nephrons just reabsorb all that back into circulation. So the following things are actually secreted by the PCT. So things like drugs and toxins, protons and nitrogenous wastes, including ammonium, urea, and uric acid. Those are things that our body is trying to get rid of, so they are secreted into the filtrate so that we can get rid of that. We see the example of protons here. Some of the other things are not depicted, and sometimes they happen at different levels of the PCT, such as the early PCT or versus later PCT, so that's why they're not all depicted at the, on the same image, but don't worry about those details for the MCAT. So just appreciate that a lot of things are secreted at this point. Now I mentioned these nitrogenous waste products, and so you might be wondering where they actually come from. So anything that has nitrogen in it that becomes that is a waste is typically resulting from the breakdown of amino acids as our cells use them for different purposes. So recall that amino acids, right? The amino group tells you that there is a nitrogen there. So these nitrogenous wastes are all related to protein breakdown, protein metabolism in our cells, and they typically are. Uh, ammonium, which then can be converted to urea, and so all those things also need to be removed from our circulation because they can accumulate and cause bad things. And just a word on the mechanisms that are occurring here at the level of the PCT, and you may have noticed already um, on a previous image, is that a lot of what's being reabsorbed here is actually being absorbed in symporters or antiporters that use secondary active transport. So our body loves to couple reabsorption of things to excretion of other things. For example, here we see some examples of antiparters where uh, getting rid of some protons helps us absorb some other molecules and so on and so forth. Those details aren't super relevant for the MCAT, so don't worry about memorizing that. Just keep in mind that there's a lot of secondary active transport going on at the PCT. So PCT cells require a lot of energy uh, to transport these ions and substances across their membranes because this is active transport. So they have high levels of mitochondria that produce lots of ATP so that they can maintain a nice gradient of ions that are being used um, to drive the secondary active transport. So that's it for this lesson on the PCT.